Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilu here in Mexico in the beautiful city of Merida and uh, I'm sitting here today with Samuel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for accepting to do this interview in English. Thank you for thinking that I'm interesting enough to interview. <laughs> I, from what I heard, this is this is quite exceptional. You had a very interesting life, and you traveled a lot, and you're interested in many topics. And there is one really right now that a lot of the world is talking about is this famous date of 2012. And I know that one of your recent, you know, topics and what you like to talk about or read is about time, and you're quite interested in it. So, what is your view on this on this 2012 date? Well, first of all, 212, it's uh, debated because there are many archaeologists that say that the Mayan uh, calendar is not stopping, it's not ending at uh, 2012, but only at, at 154,000 and something more years. It uh, depends on how you read the calendar. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the calendars are very relative. We have a calendar that starts following mm, some people 211, 2011 years uh, from now. Well, we know now that this uh, Christian calendar is uh, flawed because it's uh, wrong about six or seven years Anyway, I have friends that are now celebrating uh, year 5,700 and something. They are Jews. I have friends that are now celebrating uh, 1,570 something years. They are Muslims. And I have friends in India that they say that we are celebrating 9,000 and something more. So these numbers doesn't mean, don't mean really nothing mm -hmm. serious. Mm -hmm. how, how, so how do you relate to time now? Time is a very hard question. Agustin de Ipona used to say, I know what time is except when they ask me to define it. Then I cannot say what time is. Now there are some uh, British philosophers that say that time does not exist, that you can describe equations in all physics without using time. Time means not necessary. Some of them say time does not exist. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? Uh, very easy. I could live without time. <laughs> it doesn't uh, bother me. I don't think that time is something that you can really measure. You can measure physical things, but you cannot measure time. So what would you say would be more important to focus on rather than time? Because a lot of us in society focus on this and we feel like we'd never have enough. Well, it's, I'd say that it's more important to focus on goodness, on niceness, on a world that uh, is uh, giving something to the others. Time has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. So it's more living from the heart rather than the mind? No, the heart is a, it's a physical... Uh, From kindness rather than from the mind? No. The heart is a physical organ that has nothing to do with mind. Yes. Mind is important. The heart is good for pumping blood. 
But don't you think living from the heart, I mean, living from, from, from what you were describing earlier, that means that describes, uh, leads our way in life rather than this. I like that expression from you that I don't know if it's been uh, recorded, but when somebody asks, who are you, who are you? They say, here, why here? Yeah. Me? Here? What? Why is uh, me in here? Uh -huh. No, I'm uh, absolutely uh, convinced that me is inside here if that does exist. Me. Mm -hmm. So how do you relate then to your reality? How, how, what is for you the nature of reality then? Do you question, have you ever questioned it then since you're so interested in time? No, for me, reality is a very complex question. Uh -huh. I don't know what reality is or whether if that exists. Uh -huh. Even if you look at my bookshelf right here, there's a book about what is reality. We don't know what is reality. Uh -huh. We should like to know if there's something that is real, really reality. But we are not sure. Mm -hmm. Every day, reality changes. Mm -hmm. y you have been able to, from my understanding, to create a, 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 a reality that brought you to India, to France, to so many different countries. You have been able to do and achieve some things. What do you account that on? Well, uh, reality didn't uh, uh, throw me to India or to France or to the rest of the world. It was mainly by airplane, <laughs> not by reality. <laughs> So what I mean by that is that you have been able to live uh, an exceptional life. You, you, you have traveled and you, you, it's not an ordinary life. So is that something that you have wanted or is it something that you have created for yourself? You know, is it? No, I never looked f uh, for that. It happens. It comes uh, accidentally. Like everything in life comes accidentally. You, you don't think we have, um, we can co-create our life? Not at all. You don't think we're possibly um, um, co-creators? Like there is a, um, a piece of us is God and there is, and there's God inside of us? No, I don't believe in that. So, so you, so everything that has happened for you was and an, an by accident, and you were more or less than everything that has happened to humankind has happened by some way of accident. Mm -hmm. Why do you, uh, Homo sapiens? are here, and the uh, Nethertalensis were gone. I think it's mainly by some reasons, but mainly by accident. Do you have hope right now for where we're at as a human species? Do you think there is a way we could auto-destruct ourselves? Oh, I am sure that human species are going to be ended like all species. You know, 98% of all species that have uh, existed in Earth are now extinct. Why not we? What do you think are the signs of that? I don't understand. What are the, why make, what makes you say that? What do you think, why do you think we're extincting our species? Oh, it's very evident. We're destroying the planet. We are changing the climate. 
we will be uh, gone with that and then life will continue in a different form as it has been evolving through the last uh, 100 million years. Could it be that it's our way of thinking and of reasoning and being in life and our relationship to who we think we are with time, with reality, that could be that is that is going the wrong way? Uh, not really. I think that tigers are going extinct because of the way of living and acting, not because of the way they think. Not because of human beings and how we treat animals and plants? Well, we treat animals and plants mainly in Occident because of this idea that we are the masters, that we that animals and plants were created for our pleasure. Uh -huh. That's absolutely wrong from my point of view. And then if we destroy what is my own, well, I can do it. But when I understand that this is part of me, this is part of the life I'm uh, living, then I cannot destroy that uh, without knowing that I'm destroying myself. Mm -hmm. That's pretty profound. Well, uh, I am optimist in the way of saying that uh, human species will be extinct uh, very soon. I'm optimist also in thinking that uh, we will be replaced with something better. What is your then view on the plant kingdom, on the plants, for example? What what is there? I mean, is there so much? It seems like more and more now, uh, architects and science and are really looking at how nature functions to understand the nature of the universe that we haven't really learned so far that we have missed, like there's something, there's a big piece that's been missing. And we have been destroying this way the planet and we have been building buildings that are not fitting and not good for the earth. And we have been putting some equations that are limiting in our own expansion and new inventions that could really support the planet. Because we haven't looked and studied at, at now how nature and plants, how they do it. Well, the most beautiful thing I can uh, imagine is plants that are living only by sunlight and CO2. We animals need to eat another living beings. Plants do not. Mm -hmm. Some people are around the world uh, live by light. Have you heard of that, the prana? I don't, uh, I don't believe on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because maybe for some people we could, we could well be that. I'm sure we can't. If you see our internal organs, if you see our teeth, if you see our organization, we are mammals. Uh, built to eat other mammals and to eat living things. We are not organized as to live on sunlight and things like that. Um, you, you lived in India, correct? <laughs> and, and so Gandhi and a lot of um, um, uh, spiritual masters, let's say, have um, come to a place when they meet, for example, and fish, you know, they have come to a vegetarian diet. They're strong, you know, they, they're, and, and their awakening and their way of perceiving things has also changed. It's, there seems to be a correlation between the eating habits and, and our own evolution as a species. Would you agree with that? Well, I'm not sure that's a very big 
question, but uh, if I go to my dentist, he will tell me that you have some teeth there that are for cutting meat. You have some molars that are for grinding living things. Uh -huh. You cannot live on spirit. I mean, uh, the human animal uh -huh. cannot live on spirit. Uh -huh. The human animal is what evolution made him. Uh -huh. He's not much different from the wolf. She's not more different from the cat or the dog. We are made the same way. We have vertebrae. We have four limbs. We are not made like plants to live on air and uh, uh -huh. sunlight. But the, the, the human body has very much evolved over time, over we used to be, we, we were not like this, and now the capacities that the young kids have and things are, seems to be evolving in our body also seems to evolve our intelligence, our, our, a lot of people now are developing telepathy and, and have a, a very different ways of, of perceiving things. It seems like our species could evolve in a very different way that it would be hard to realize right now. Okay. If our species evolve to a different species, that's okay. But our own species is very young. You know, there have been uh, Homo sapiens sapiens only for the last uh, 100 years. That's nothing in uh, biological time. That's a very young species. And uh, I suspect that young species are not the best adequate for long life. Yes. Uh, there is some, let's say, on archaeological archaeological sites um, uh, like in Peru you know there's been cities that have been found without uh, walls and nobody's there clearly people live there it seemed like there was uh, hundreds and thousands of years ago some other civilization that were way more advanced than we were no not thousands of uh, hundreds of uh, years ago only tens of uh, thousands of years ago that's very, very young. It's very recent. Yeah. 200 million years ago, there were no mammals. How do you, what is your perception about like Egypt, for example, with the pyramids? And how, do you, how, how can we explain that those were built by human beings? Well, those were built by human beings making slaves of uh, other human beings, maybe making them carry uh, huge stones to build their pyramids, to build their own tombs. But, but, but the stones were so big, no human beings could carry those. But you can build machines uh, that uh, mm -hmm. can transport those stones and those stones can be have been transported in Egypt and in Peru, and that's not magic. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, se this seems to me, uh, in my own opinion, that there was some civilizations way before us that were way more advanced than we are, and we're very. It seems to me that this society and our species right now is very primitive compared to what we can be. We. Well, uh, the word advanced is uh, very complicated. <laughs> I cannot be sure what is uh, advanced and what is uh, primitive. Anyway, 200 years ago, the English, while colonizing the world, said that the rest of the world was uh, primitive. And that justified taking their land and exploiting them. Yeah. I don't believe in that. What, what would you, is there, um, how can we finish this on a positive note? Like why, why, 
Is there a message that you have uh, that is optimistic about what we're going through and where we're heading or something that we can share with people watching that you would like to say? Well, the problem is the word uh, we. I can be optimistic thinking that uh, humankind is uh, going to end his, uh, its... Uh, task and uh, being replaced by something else and uh, three th thousand uh, million years ago what was the message well that those bacteria and those small animals would give uh, life to something else completely unknown Maybe we are in the way of giving life to something else completely unknown. And that's optimistic. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Samuel, for your time. Thank you for doing this in English. I appreciate it. Thank you. S excuse me for my bad English. <laughs> we were able to understand. Thank you. <laughs> Much love, my beautiful co-creators from Mexico. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> Cut. Thank you for watching the GC tour. Yes, millions and millions of people are watching. So much juiciness happening around the world and I'm so excited to take you on the um, juicy adventures and that we're co-creating this and that you get to and we get to share and listen to all this wisdom from all those teachers and scientists and best-selling authors and also ordinary everyday people making the quantum leap and discovering a new way of being coming from um, the heart and opening our hearts and mind further to discover that there's so much magic in this world and we can co-create a magnificent uh, planet here, all of us together. I want to thank you for um, watching the tour. I know many of you watch it very often. Thank you for sharing the videos. I see them posted on many walls on Facebook and everywhere. I want to thank you for all the the donations, um, the financial donations that have been given to the tour because this is how the tour runs. All those interviews are free to watch and uh, and those people are not paying uh, me to, to to do them. So I want to I want to really thank you for for that because this is how it can continue. And next year there's 2012. So if you even know some people that are philanthropists, please send them this way because this is so precious to be able to, so that we're able to continue to do this and share these uh, with the world. Um, this is a very spe special moment in time and I feel very blessed to be doing those interviews and traveling and sharing um, all this information. There's so much beauty and magnificence on the planet. Hopefully through these videos you get to discover um, other aspects that we're not always exposed to uh, with the big media. So I think it's in all of us to take our responsibility and get the word out. I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Much love.